It was sort of like an urban legend, the riding across the country. Everyone knew someone who had done it or someone's cousin who had done it, but no, I didn't know anyone directly. You know, we put a card table in front of the talk house and uh, we decided how much money it would cost to actually do the ride. And we said, if we get to that amount, then I'm going. And I remember that night we got to that amount, it was, it was kind of a, you know, crazy moment because then I really realized I was going and it all became real. I think we met Chris when they were pitching the idea of doing the soldier ride, being maybe in the group of people that thought that, yeah, it's a novel idea, but I don't think it's going to go very far. We went down to Walter Reed and that was really when it got scary because once I walked into Walter Reed, it was such a serious place. The urgency to succeed became so much stronger and the fear of failing was growing much stronger as well. I remember Ryan calling and going, you remember that guy, John Milia from Wounded Warrior Project? And I'm like, yeah. And Ryan says, you know, he's got this guy riding a bike across the country or something. And we introduced ourselves. We were total strangers. Um, it was awkward. How do I act around these guys? Do I not look at his legs? Do I ask him questions about it? Whatever. And the next day we went to a bike shop and I was explaining to Heath about um, the different bikes and titanium and carbon and aluminum and this and that and he looks down at his legs and he taps them and he goes I know a little bit about carbon and titanium. <laughs> Heath and I were lucky enough to get to spend a few days riding through Colorado with him and just kind of support him and be you know some wounded soldiers to, to help be a part of the ride and uh, what an impressive guy I mean it and just the rest of the crew from the uh, soldier ride family just really really blew us away. So Ryan got fitted with a regular bike he rode with his prosthetic um, he rode a hand cycle and these two guys picked the Rockies <laughs> to do their first like two days. You know, meeting Chris and riding about 10 miles I think the first day and just being just toast and then getting up the next day and riding about 30 miles and, and feeling such a, a sense of accomplishment after, after the first dismal day of riding through Colorado. At, 5,000 feet above sea level. He uh, would ride until he literally would get sick. He'd throw up, climb into the RV. An hour later, he'd say, I'm ready to go again. Drag him out, throw him on his bike, and he'd do that. And we did that three or four times. I just thought it was cool, and it turned out we got the opportunity to ride the last 10 miles in with Chris when he finished up in San Diego. And I just remember thinking to myself, you know what, if, if they do this again, I want to do the whole thing. And literally no sooner than 10, 15 minutes after the end of the ride, they said they wanted to ride the whole thing. Honestly, probably seven months passed after that conversation where I completely forgot that I'd agreed to ride a bike across the country and maybe secretly hoped everybody else did too. So I finished in the fall and then we left in the following spring uh, from LA back to, uh, to the East Coast. I mean, we get to ride our bikes and People make a big deal out of it, but I mean, to be able to help these guys by riding your bike is a no-brainer. It's kind of a big part of me and Heath coming out here is that we just really want to make sure that it, we can keep it in the public's eyes. It's mm -hmm. a worthwhile cause to support organizations that take care of soldiers. The ride as a whole was amazing, and it was, it was a ton of work, and there was a lot of days where I didn't want to get out of bed, and there was a lot of days that... I felt like I was too sore to get out of bed. Uh, well, what we're doing is we're, we're riding across country to raise both funds and awareness for, for the Wounded Warrior Project. And uh, basically, these guys want to show what they, what they can do and uh, what guys who are in the hospital right now with similar injuries, that uh, they can still do anything they want. One of the more profound parts of it was the, the reception that we had from the people along the way and how that the groundswell of support grew as we moved across the country and the word got out what was going on and the impact it was having on people's perception of uh, wounded service members. It was an incredible feeling to be able to share that with Ryan and Chris and Nick and Peter and, and all the guys at Soldier Ride. But once it started to take on kind of a life of its own with, with people that cared as much as we did, it was definitely something that I wasn't prepared for. Keith uh, watched him in his uh, hand cycle there uh, drag himself across the desert and over the Rockies through the Midwest. It's crazy. And just to see what happened is just like, I mean, it's a testament to the guys up there at the talk house and what incredible people they are. And uh, 
I just honor to know him. Because, you know, the community, uh, East Hampton and Amagansett stepped up, um, we were able to make it a reality and, uh, you know, helped make it happen and for that I'm forever grateful.